I'm a psychologist with a focus in cognitive and social neuroscience. At the moment, I'm working at the research center Jülich. Um, before my time at the, or in the Virtual Times project, I was at the University Hospital of Cologne. And there I was working on a project about nonverbal communication in autism spectrum disorder in human avatar interactions. Mm, yeah, I mean, humans are profoundly social beings and interacting with others lies at their, at their heart or at the core of what makes us human. Um, consequently, our brain is constantly concerned with understanding others, with predicting their future actions. However, if you, if you consider how different humans are, how different their perspectives, their intentions, their motives are, this is an extremely difficult endeavor. Um, in order to successfully communicate and to successfully interact with others, we have to detect, identify, interpret very subtle details in their utterances, in their nonverbal behavior, and we have to decide for the proper reaction and response within all of that within seconds or, or fractions of a second. But um, our brain does not only manage to navigate through this extremely complex social environment, but we can actually enjoy that. We actually enjoy the presence of others and are not constantly overwhelmed by the complexity of the situation itself. And yeah, I find that just fascinating. At the moment, I'm investigating how we experience the passage of time and which factors might influence our passage of time and how the experience of passage of time might be changed in different psychopathological conditions like schizophrenia or depression or autism, for example. But we are also trying to find out how our experience of passage of time could be changed or manipulated in a virtual environment. And in addition, of course, we also are trying to find out how our brain processes time and vice versa, of course, how from observing our, our brain at work, um, we can conclude something about the, the subjective experience of time of a person in a given situation. I would, I would say it's the topic of time or time experience itself. Um, I mean, time has been investigated by philosophers for more than 2000 years now, and many different disciplines have concerned themselves with, with the investigation of time and what time actually is, including, of course, physicists and psychologists. But it still kind of baffles or irritates us. Um, we still haven't really understood it. Um, we, can, we cannot see time in any way or the passage of time and we cannot uh, directly perceive the passage of time. But still, the experience of passage of time is an integral part of our everyday life. So, from a psychologist's perspective, that makes investigating time extremely challenging, but also, of course, all the more interesting. And yeah, challenge. So my, my personal goals, despite the scientific goals or object objectives, of course, to, to understand better the um, experience of passage of time are also to learn more about how you could and can actually apply virtual realities in clinical contexts and specifically the combination of virtual realities and neuroscientific measurements. Um, I believe that specifically in this combination, so in the real-time manipulation of virtual realities 
and potentially them being informed through neuroscientific measurements. Um, this combination is, in my opinion, very has a very huge potential in in clinical context as well as general psychological context. So um, learning more about that, getting into contact with that is extremely interesting and fascinating for me personally. If this first aspect of really understanding how the passage of time experience could be, I don't want to go so far as to really expect that we will completely understand it, how the brain actually processes that. But if we could just get a, I don't know, a glimpse at how the brain might cope with that. Uh, just some step into understanding how our brain actually does that, how our brain actually copes with time. So we have a pretty good understanding or at least a decent understanding of how our brain processes visual information or auditory information or any other kind, any other of those very important aspects of our um, perception. But time is something we don't have an access to at all. And just, I don't know, getting a foot into the door, getting somewhere near to, to, to really understanding how time is processed in the brain. That I think would be as a that can only be achieved as a team and only can be achieved with all the other partners from all the other sides. Um, but if we could get there, I think that would be a huge success for the whole project. That's a good question. I to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> no, I have I have a lot of ideas how it could actually change our life. So the first step would be, of course, to to better understand it. So before we can actually manipulate, before we can actually um, intentionally change something about the personal life of persons, uh, we can just by understanding how that works, um, how we experience time, what is important for our experience of time. Of course, one could think about, I don't know, eliminating boredness or something. So eliminating all appearances or all episodes and with persons are bored, but I'm not, not entirely sure whether we would want to achieve that actually. So, um, but of course we could at some point try to manipulate how persons experience time but that's not even the most important goal the first goal would just be to to just understand what is so important about oh no let me let me change that um i will uh, can we do a read with that yeah okay 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 ah yeah okay um then before the manipulation part <laughs> um i mean Time is, an, as I've already said, an integral part of our life, of our everyday life experience. And I think a, a better understanding, of course, first, maybe a better understanding, a better scientific understanding of time, but with with time, that will translate and transfer to the, the, the public as well. And I believe that those uh, scientific insights into a topic at some point will also advance kind of the, the society and the, the public understanding of time. And I mean, since our uh, time is always kind of limited, we are always kind of in a, uh, in, a, in a hurry, we are kind of always want to achieve the next goal and the next and can't go fast enough. I think to be more conscious about what actually um, is so important for for our experience of this passage of time, for our hurry, for our or also boredness, um, I think that can really advance their society and how society in general thinks about what makes us actually happy, what makes us enjoy a situation. Uh, what also causes us stress. 
So I cannot really pinpoint the exact uh, situation in which this knowledge will help us, but I'm pretty sure that a general better understanding of, of, of our experience of time can help us a lot. Yeah, we have uh, now conducted several studies on the experience of the passage of time and different aspects of this experience of the passage of time. And we were, for example, able to show that our experience of how fast time passes does not necessarily have has to match our experience or our estimation of how much time has passed in a given situation. Um, so, in, in other words, irrespective of the actual duration or physical duration of the situation, we can experience time as passing very fast or very slow. This sounds pretty counterintuitive, but when we, for example, had participants in a virtual star field, we could manipulate their experience of how fast time passes by showing them faster or slower stars, for example, or by showing them a, a more dense or less dense environment. All of that changed their subjective experience of how fast time passes. Um, yeah, and that means that we are not only able to systematically predict the subjective experience of passage of time in a participant, but we can potentially also in this environment, of course, manipulate um, their experience of the passage of time. And the next step would or will now be to um, investigate this effect, potentially even enhanced effect in a virtual and uh, reality. So using um, a head mounted virtual reality. And then, of course, also to study the neural correlates of those effects, of those passage of time experience enhancing effects, so to say. <laughs>